reminder about our quote of the day taken from the wise words of J.R. Reem. He says, life is about first impressions and you have just one shot at it. Take the best shots. Well, welcome back on the program this morning. Joining us to expand our thoughts as we review headline stories is a gentleman of the press and a public affairs analyst from the People's Reporter, Honorable Desmond Olariwaju Fowobi. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning, Bito. Good morning, Shijuke. And good morning, Nigerians. It's good to see you and go to your screen once more. Well, um, it's wonderful to have you here as well, Honorable. Let's uh, uh, set the ball rolling. Firstly, the president, uh, Bola Amatinubu, has harped on the need for ECOWAS to uh, continually dialogue with uh, Sahel states at the just concluded AU meeting. And this is coming at a time when, uh, you know, three African nations have formed a, a particular union where they are pulling away from the ECOWAS. Uh, this is, firstly, a bad sign that they are pulling away from the ECOWAS, but also, on the other hand, a good sign that our dear president, as chairman of ECOWAS, is hampering on unity. Uh, thank you, Shijuke. Uh, you need to understand that at these material times, considering the empirical evidence as what led them into backing out from ECOWAS, the president and the chairman of ECOWAS, Ashura Jubola Metinubu, needs to tread with caution. He, would have, he wouldn't have done any better. His approach is just the best because I told you sometimes on, in this studio that the peculiarity and the sensitivity of the reason why they are backing out is not something that you need to be in a rush in resolving. It has to be too intensive and collaborative and negotiation. And like you said, unity is needed right now because if you actually investigate and underscore what is happening in these three states, countries, you will find out that they have a genuine reason for their action. They have a reason for their action. And the president is not naive. He's privy to this information, considering some of the shatter and some of the, uh, some the, some of the influence of some of their colonial masters in the uh, affairs of their sovereign states that has not been going well with the people. Don't forget that the leadership of the Tozu that led to the takeover of military in this country is propelled by the yearnings of the majority of the people. What you are seeing being ex ex executed in these three countries are the reflection of the masses. And that is why you see that the masses who are supposed to be speaking in strong voice against the, the toppling of government and taking over of military uh, into the affairs of the country. They are not doing much. Have you visited these countries in the recent time? Have you heard any agitators? Have you seen some parallel government? Because this is a fight for justice. This is a fight for freedom and total sovereignty of the country. So the president needs to be careful. This is, I know, as um, the region, we are talking about integration and global integration. Uh, at this point in time, it is a challenge on its own. Having a Sahel states and a breakout out of uh, a West African country is not a good thing, considering the progress we are trying to make, and that is unification of the whole world, bringing everybody together to speak and to understand and to tap from the Commonwealth. And there we go. We have some states that have broken out, you know, and it is in good faith because of they need they had a challenge they need to resolve. And they felt that we need to come out first before we need to go back to drawing board. So that's the country has not plunged into civil chaos and killings and destruction like we see in some other parts of in, in, in East Africa. So we need to appreciate these people for managing the fight and appreciate the president for speaking to larger, larger house, the AU, to let tread with caution. Let's try to negotiate more and see how we can coerce them back because it is indeed a sensitive case and we need to tread with caution. Now, Honorable, um, a, a, common, a common binder holds uh, these three countries, talking about the, the um, Association of Sahel States yeah. now. They are all Francophone countries mm -hmm. and they all have a track record of, you know, badly run governments, poverty mm -hmm. and hunger in these countries. Mm -hmm. Now they have pulled out of ECOWAS. Do we see a trend following suits where they would recruit other countries to also pull out of ECOWAS and join the the Association of Sahel mm. States. It is um, 
it's it is not um, maybe something that is uh, direct, something that can happen just like that. It has to be uh, people are watching. You know, when the people like to identify with successes, if you have a good success story to tell, you find out that naturally people would love to be your companion. There are litmus tests. You know, they have been complaining of bad governance over the years, and the people have been languishing in abject for poverty and underdevelopment for a quite for quite a long time. Now. The reason for breakout is that they needed to put in place good governance that delivered the dividend of government to the people. They want to. De they have come under the campaign of they want to develop their people. They want to grow their economy. They want to give credence to local content and break out from the overstretching influence of their colonial master. Now it is not something you will expect that other African countries will jump on, because it is not a, an easy task. It is not an easy task. So. First, we need to see what happened between now, two years, three years, in this higher state to see if truly there is a proportionate amount of progress in this state. Therefore, you'll find that naturally some other African countries in West Africa would be also advocating to also go. Because right now, they have gone out. There have not been any successes yet. It's not easy. Rome is not built. Success is not built in a day. It takes time. So in the meantime, people will be watching, countries are watching to see if this pulling out of ECOWAS and this region will bring about success to the growth and the development of those three states. If we can achieve that, you will find out that naturally there will be uh, protests, there will be agitation by other neighboring countries around West Africa to, to follow suit. Well, fr from my conversation with uh, certain individuals mm. with regards to this issue, uh, some of them say that the pulling out of the states, three states from ECOWAS is a slap on the face of Nigeria, firstly, as having been the country with a president who is chairing ECOWAS. And they, they have also I, they have also suggested that Nigeria as a country should have met these countries with brute force to reinstate them back into mm -hmm. ECOWAS. Do you think that is a viable solution? And do you think that should have been the first step of the, Ni of the Nigerian president who, is, who doubles as president and chairman of ECOWAS towards these states? Uh, first of all, we cannot have a repeat of what is happening in Russia and Ukraine in Africa, especially West Africa that is very volatile. You know, there are certain situations that are not, you know, applicable in some places. Look at what is happening in Ukraine. Look at what is happening in Russia. Look at what is happening in Palestine. Look at what is happening in Burma. Look at what is happening in Israel. You see, we need to understand the nitty-gritty. We need to understand what are the issues. Because it is not every issue that can be resolved. Some can only be managed. You don't expect the Nigerian government and ECOWAS to pull out troops to attack this country. It will cause big problem because all these countries in West Africa presently are going through one internal crisis, economic crisis, or some uh, some banditry. They have enough share of the global problem that has been orchestrated by this urgency to go and intervene by some bigger countries across the globe. Like, look at what you can imagine what is happening in Russia is affecting us in Nigeria, it's affecting the global economy. For Africa not to suffer, just like we have seen in some part of the world, there is needless for the president to mobilize troops to go and it is not a slap. These are suffering countries, they are talking about things that borders on their value system, that borders on their development, that borders on their economic prosperity. You don't expect an independent country like Nigeria, unless Nigeria is also benefiting from the loot that these people complained about. Hence, Nigeria is not benefiting from the loot. You don't expect Nigeria to wage war against this independent country. And besides, have ECOWAS at this moment, I tell you sincerely, do not have the capacity to go into war with these still countries because ECOWAS is being eaten with so many civil crises, hunger, uh, kidnapping, and all that. So that is an issue that need to be addressed first before you now talk about going to count to cause more problems. That will mean a lot of hunger. It will mean a lot of destabilization to the headquarters itself. Now we still have uh, some appreciable level of peace in, in West Africa. By the time they go into war, 
the hunger with time stain, the economic instability with time stain, kidnapping, there will be movement of small arms and light weapons. We don't even want to imagine that. So it is the best thing to keep negotiating. It's not a slap because it is a problem. A country is having a problem with their colonial master and the way things, see, if I open the cans of worms, you will justify the reason why this country needs to go. Do you even know what is happening in Nigeria? Look at all the conglomerate companies in Africa in Nigeria. Who owns them? How colonial masters with the influence of some of us that are part of the directors in the country. And that is the problem Nigeria and Africa is having presently. They colonized us. They gave us, indepe they gave us independence. And but they do not new, give us economic... They did not give us economic independence. And that is why we are where we are today. And it's pained me that a lot of people are not doing research. A lot of people do not even know the root cause of... What is happening in Nigeria? I thank God for the course I read in school. I did peace studies and conflict resolution that exposed me to some nitty gritty of the causes of the problem we have in Nigeria. Have you heard about divide and rule before? Absolutely. You understand what that means? Definitely. Now, if you understand divide and rule, you will understand the reason why Africa has been subject to abject poverty. And it is not caused by some of these, although we have leaders that are misbehaving, some of our leaders in Africa are misbehaving, but it is not their fault. They are sealed to these help us that are not within africa now we'll come back to more following the highlights of a meeting held in accra ghana at the 45th ordinary session of the executive council and six media coordination meeting of the african union with the echo as in attendance is also a call to support states and member states facing terrorism with four million dollars asylum seekers and idps have also have been given nine million dollars as well to help them deal with issues as it concerns democracy in their states. Now we'll take a quick commercial break and when we return, we'll turn our attention to more developments as captured on the front pages. Please stay with us. Well, thanks for staying with us on the program this morning as we revisit issues in the news. Be reminded that your contributions are generously welcomed as you join our online stream on our webpage and www.adbntv.com forward slash live. Remember, it's all about objectivity as we begin to revisit front-burning issues in the Nigerian perspective. Now, in a heated exchange over the weekend, the NMDPR ex Chief Executive, Alhaji Farouk Ahmed, and the GC of Dangote Group, Alhaji Aliko Dangote, clashed over their varying opinions following a laboratory test as conducted on Dangote Diesel, where it was reported that there might have been high sulfuric contents. Now we'll look at these issues in depthly as they greet more than four newspapers this morning. Mm. Now quite captured on the blueprint this morning is the root cause of this debate. Now on the blueprint accompanied by other papers you'd find that lead story, high sulfur content, subject our products to credibility test, Dangote Des NMDPR. Now similar to that you'd find Besides the masthead on the Punch newspaper, more reports of what many would say is adulterated diesel. Now, let's get your thoughts. Many are saying that this comment shouldn't be coming at a time when this might be the only functional refinery in the country. And if there were issues with laboratory tests on the high sulfuric contents of diesel from Dangote refinery, there were better ways to address it. Uh, I am so happy that the Nigerian newspaper takes this as a priority issue to be analyzed by the Nigerian people. You see, whether you like it or not, Dangote is a local content and NMPC have a share. Dangote is not completely owned by Dangote, Aliko Dangote. Dangote is our product. The land that Dangote is seated in Lagos State, that area is classified as free trade zone. That is to tell you that the government have some appreciable shares in the Dangote refineries. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, now we also heard about 20, you know, percent shared owned by NNPC in that Dangote. Although last week we heard that it has been reduced to 7.5, you know, percent share owned in that NNPC. Now, around Thursday and Friday last week, we heard an allegation it was an allegation because there were never any tests conducted by nmdpra the ceo or the dg or what they call it farouk hamad yeah. you know coming out 
to issue that degrading and embarrassing statement about his people, about his own company, about this country and about Dangote is something that I find that it beats my understanding as a logical and a patriotic citizen. First of all, products can be improved on at any time. Now, I'm not even talking about whether that position is not what I want to talk about right now. I want to talk about first of all, the NMDPIA, have they been washed of the corruption allegation about 60 billion US dollars is missing from our oil as a result of oil theft. The DPR, the NMDPR, the NNPC, and every other agency still have question to answer at the plenary. And yet, it's done. They invited him in Iran. He didn't come. He sent representative. Twice this year. He is not coming. See, a serious government like has if we have a serious government because i'm beginning to see that this government is not very serious a serious government will ensure that there is nothing like theft or a theft in 2023 2024 when the country is facing the worst economic hardship do you do you, do you i'm coming okay presently we are now sitting at about 1.4 million barrel per day when OPEC already gave us opportunity of producing 2,200 barrel per day. We are now short for. Why? Because of theft. Now, this MDPL, this NMDPLA, they have mechanized and sophisticated ways of monitoring. And I can tell you that Farouk Alaji Farouk Ahmad and every other of our GMC and everybody, the minister, everybody knows about this oil theft. Because if you go to their facility that monitors, you can track when this oil are explored, how they were shipped, the points across the globe where these things are trans transferred to. They can monitor from here. And yet, Somebody, a serious government will come out and tell us that there is oil theft. When you know, I can say this anywhere, anytime. Oil theft is not something you can do alone. It's something that needs the cooperation. You need, you need people, accomplice, systematic accomplice from different ministries and agencies and from people in the presidency and working with our Nigerian Navy. Everybody knows about oil theft. The argument of oil theft, oil theft, setting up committee for oil theft is just to dissuade and to deceive the Nigerians. It is just like an opium. The truths are on the table of Mr. President, but they are not hurting on it. So, so, so now that Dangote refinery is coming into uh, play in in the market, um, these people who are behind the oil theft as you claim now, mm -hmm. feel threatened and are <laughs> accusing him of monopolist tendencies mm. at the same time we have somebody as a high rank in nigeria the speaker uh, uh you know of the house of representatives uh, honorable abbas saying that this refinery is a beacon of hope for our dear country but on the other hand we have people who are supposed to be pushing Dangote refinery upward trying to trample it down that is to tell you the extent of how their frustration can cause what they call that emotional outburst it was not logical i know that expression was uncontrollable because of the fear of losing you know these cabals oil cabals are losing out it's the ref what you see from Ahmed Farouk is the reflection of, of, of the feeling, frustration feeling and the by fear the and the threat they feel for them going to come into the into the game now because it's a private sector. It is not business. I've said it on this studio before, in this studio before, that it is not going to be business as usual. 
These people at the fingertips makes one billion dollars from wrong licenses and diversion of products. These are the real problem that we are facing. And that is why when I see some people want to express dissatisfaction, they don't even know the right quarters to actually direct their hunger. If you have any problem and you understand the cause of your problem, that problem is 50% solved. Sir, one of the problems we are having in Nigeria today is because of oil corruption that has bedeviled the oil sector. For 50 good years, we've sold crude. Where is the money? The development you are having in Nigeria state, they are not commensurable with the amount of money we've made in dollars. Now, Nigeria is struggling to produce 2,200 barrels. Do you know that before Achiwa Jubal Ahmed got into power, we were producing around 800 and 900? That is insane. What happened? What happened? Because some few people sat on the country's common world and they are diverting it into their personal pocket. And the president and everybody is looking. Even the Senate is looking. The House of Rep is looking. Why do you think we have House Committee? We have committees. Their function is to do oversight. Now, there was an oversight visit to Dango yes, refinery. Yes, there was a Dango... A, we had the Senate... the weekend, for one, the because of the allegation from Ahmad Farouk that the oil or the fuel that Dango refinery is going to be shunning out in August to Nigeria people is not good and it can affect our lives and our country, our, our people. That is a, a threat to life. And it is a serious matter. So they went into investigation over the weekend where they went to get uh, sampling random sampling from filling station you understand and the subject that sampling to okay. test and at the end of the day it was confirmed that what nmdp are brought into this country they are even worse killer than what dangote has, is giving us and, and, and let's and pick up those infographics to back these arguments now whilst they are contradicting claims on inferior quality now it's been cited with an in-house laboratory test conducted at dangote refineries Dagote himself speaking following the oversight visit cited that the diesel obtained from the refinery had 87.6 parts per million which is a more low sulfuric content as compared to imported diesel which exceeds 1800 parts per million now following these revelations the chief executive of nndpr alhaji farouk ahmed made some comments that have now been captured in the slides that greet your screen this morning. Let's take a look at quotable comments coming in from Alhaji Farouk Ahmed, the chief executive of NMDPR. Now he says, and I quote, Dangote is requesting that we should suspend or stop all importation of petroleum products, especially automotive gas oil, AGO, or Jet Kero, and direct all marketers to the refinery. Now, before we look at Dangote's reply, this is now based on a laboratory test. It is not yes. speculations. Yes. 1,800 parts per million higher yes. than what is obtainable in Dangote. Yes. 87.6 parts per million. Yes. Now, logically speaking, would say Dangote diesel is safer for the Nigerian diesel engines. In short, not just safer for the Nigerian industry, we even safer for America and Europe. Presently, Dangote owns one of the best refinery with sophisticated equipment that can be refined to the best quality that is obtained anywhere in the world. Now, I told you earlier that it is the frustration. Somebody like Hamad Farouk should be sacked immediately. The federal government needs to first of all investigate all the wrongdoings. Do you know what but, is happening? But he hasn't granted audience to the panel set to inquire into the dealings of the NMDP. The How president is bigger than him. The country is bigger than him. He has some level of immunity that is enjoying. And it is not total immunity. It is colored with corruptions. Because it is man no man government. When I can actually call the police, I can call this and they can look away. But in a country, a same country, ideal society, this man should be invited immediately by the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Senate President of the Republic of Nigeria needs to sit with this man and he should explain in details where he got his fat. 
compared to what the House Committee have gone to test. Why is he making such comments degrading the country? Something that is going to relieve the country's economy. Do you know what it means? In the last 20 years, Nigerian government has spent 20, 12 trillion naira, you know, for overall refurbishment of our refineries. Overall maintenance of our refineries in the last 20 years. And yet, we've been solving since 1999 to date. Nigerians have been importing average of about how many billion US dollars in a month. Well, 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 comments like this coming from, from uh, uh, Ahmed Farouk, uh, would, you will agree with me, it shows that he's firstly undermining the market, secondly, has very little product knowledge of what he is supposed to be representing, yes, yes. thereby thereby accusing, um, you know, a refinery or a company that is bring that is offering Nigerians a higher quality of uh, a product than what the NM uh, DPRA is offering. Uh, actually, okay. you know, I've once said it in this studio before that the reason why Nigeria is not working is because we have some people in this country that are anti-progress, anti developments their interest is their selfish interest they don't have the interest of the country they don't have the interests of the government they are only after what they get out of the system and leave this country these are people that have double uh, naturalization in different countries they have uh, citizenship in other countries these are people that small, most of their children don't stay in nigeria they don't even know what Nigeria looks like because they are enjoying the legacy of the Nigerian wealth, people's wealth, because of privilege and opportunity given to them by their virtue of appointment. Some of these were not qualified. There are people who are just school sat. There are people who just left university who are better than these people. It is just a privilege. You know, that is what we always talked about. The problem that nepotism and favoritism has cost us in this country. Someone like Ahmed Farouk does not have business in NNDPR because he does not even have knowledge of what is the subject matter. Now, putting such person in that high esteemed position of giving license to, you know, what happened in our upstream, don't you think is one of the problems we have had for Nigeria? And most Nigerians, instead of adgre addressing their grievances towards it, they are just facing another thing. It's, it's certainly a very huge uh, problem, Honorable. And uh, Nangote himself is crying out that those who are meant to, to protect. protect them yeah. are demarketing. Them. It's not everybody. It's not everybody. It is just few people. Few, 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 few oil cabals. Few oil cabals that have been making good, appreciable amount of money from looting, corruption, and from, 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 from their position of influence. You see, it is if it is they are trying to frustrate Dangote. Do you know what that refinery? The, the refinery is bringing solution to the Nigerian wars. And they don't want that. Dangote, you know, is local content. And the, do you know why Nigerians are buying fuel for seven hundred naira? Because of cost of landing, cost of bringing these products to the refinery to the petrol stations. That is why it is expensive and cost of purchase. Now. These same people are the ones given license to major importers. And then they said there won't be need to have this for importation. When when I, I can, can provide. See, <laughs> then go tell you finally bring five countries together in Africa, can, they may not be able to produce that. Uh, uh, construct that kind of refinery. Now, gentlemen, let's pick up comments coming in from Dangote as well. Mm. Like you rightly said, one of the largest single train refineries in the world with a capacity to produce over 650,000 barrels per day. Has the group responded to comments as made by the chief executive of NMDPR? While the Premium Times on its online feature has this comment, and I quote, We produce the best diesel in Nigeria. It is this happening that instead of safeguarding the market, the regulator is undermining it. Our doors are open for the regulator to conduct tests on our products anytime. Transparency is paramount to us. Unquote. Now, this issue has also dovetailed into another coverage on our next newspaper, on the Vanguard newspaper, where there are recommendations as it concerns where the country's projections in terms of its productivity in the petroleum industry is art. Now picking up the Vanguard newspaper together, let's take a look at that story beneath the master. 
On the Vanguard this morning, beneath the masthead, you'd find the story, Economy Faces Threats with 1.4 million barrels per day crude output. Economy Faces Threats with 1.4 million barrels per day crude oil output. Now, projections are that uh, to hit the $1 trillion economy, as projected under the President Bola Metinibu administration, we ought to optimize productivity to way beyond 1.8 million barrels per day. Now, the NNPC is certain that we can also produce 2 million barrels per day with the concerted arrangements that need to be taken. We've seen comments also coming in from Komo Lafe as well on what needs to be done from the NEPRC as well. Mm. Now, there's key stakeholders and players in our crude oil output mm. already know what our budget deficit is, but the issues beyond being blamed on oil theft are on the need for a synergized operation between the agencies in government, especially in the upstream sector. Yeah. You see, let me tell you, <laughs> corruption is the major enemy of our progress in the oil sector no matter the coloration that any analyst wants to give it let's simplify our problem nigeria have the capacity to produce 2000 even optimized to 2200 at some point nigeria was doing excess exceedingly well in this exploration but you see this exploration companies you understand have been asked by the senate by the house of reps to come and give you know details of what is happening what is what is going on what transpired in our exploration they are dodging they are not giving they are not honoring the invitation by the committee you understand and very soon the committee are already threatening to sanction and to take appropriate measures those are the major issues. Those are the issues. When you talk about synergy, synergy is always there, but the synergy may not produce results until you fish out the bad eggs in the system. Our system needs an overall refurbishment. We need to do what they call systematic change of some scope within this oil sector. The corruption that is going on in our oil sector is huge and actually what i met Numbu, is a man we know with will power so at this point in time i want to begin to ask myself question is ashwaju on the side of the people or this cabal otherwise this is where we need him to show that most talked about will power political will to look into this oil sector unless himself is benefiting from it Otherwise, it needs to look into this oil sector and see how they can declare a state of emergency in that sector. That is where we will begin to see headway and we will begin to see progress. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you see all this grammar, all these interventions will take us nowhere. Now, in your opinion, what are the stumbling blocks uh, hindering us from producing more uh, BPDs and uh, what recommendations would you give? viable recommendations to solve this problem and take out any form of hindrances first of all the biggest hindrance i see is the people who man the affairs of these agencies all of them needs to go including NNP heads, heads of the nnpc heads, heads of the heads nnpc of dpr nndpr all these people needs to go you need to bring fresh people who have the passion and the love of this country at heart. We don't need to romance lies. The biggest threat we have are these people. If these people want to save this country, they will produce 2,200 per day. The facility is there. If you think you do not have that, people want to explore. I have a company who are willing and help and ready to, they have all the valve, all it takes. They have what it takes to explore. If Shell is not delivering, Ajip is not delivering, Total Energy is not delivering, all these big people, exploration, Belema Oil is not delivering, we have people who are ready and they have all the soft, give them license. But in the situation whereby you're having ulterior agreement, take 60% to government, give me 40%, that is what is happening. Diversion of our crude is real. 
what we are having is not production it's diversion let's not deceive the nigerian people the height of corruption that is going on in our exploration is unbelievable and it's detestful do you think and federal government have access to this information and that is the reason for my frustration this morning do you think this is coming as a result of the industry not having an energy minister because uh from the previous the last regime we saw how uh, the president you know made himself the petroleum minister and the trend is continuing in the current administration do you think there is a need for a a return to the status quo where there should be um, a an energy minister who is not the president. I, want, I don't want. I, I want. I don't want to allege, but I will need to say this: that the reason why you have the Nigerian government and the number one official of government in Nigeria always wants to be there is because NMPC offers you smooth way to make money. And people may not be able to trace that you are a corrupt leader. There are so many windows, opportunities where you can make trillions of dollars, billions of dollars, millions of dollars, and the Nigerian people will still give you kudos as the best president. And that is what former ministers have been enjoying. Let me tell you, the former this sector, NNPC, we have ministers before. Yes. We were just uh, recently. This is a recent trend. It's not something very, that has very recent. Yes, it is not something that has been happening with us. Just in the last few. So years. the reason is because <laughs> NMPC, if people who are who target to be billionaire to make billions in dollars, they want to be the NMPC minister. So Buari does not want to steal money from our Greek. Does not want to make money from any sector or from uh, CBN. He wants to make his money directly. Block block of money directly. Now let's look at some of the laws, especially in light of the conversation on the Vanguard this morning, where there is a reported disagreement between the Navy and Nimasa. Let's pick mm. up the Vanguard this morning, and you'll see on the rider the fact that Dangote is saying that he still enjoys a lot of patronage abroad, overseas. On the rider in purple, beneath the prominent picture of the endorsement of Kamala Harris by the U.S. President Joe Biden, is the story. Our refinery having repeated orders from abroad, says Dangote. Now inserted at the left bottom corner is the splash story. Navy, Nimasa disagree over proposed law on maritime security. Mm. Now many would argue that if we had a unified front in our battle against oil theft, with both the Navy and Nimasa agreeing on the proposed laws, mm. would have a tighter security. Now the challenge has also been on the role of private security firms in helping to safeguard our national assets uh let me tell you this um like i said earlier that um you need hard accomplices for you to steal nigerian oil because nigeria have one of the best monitors one one of the best policies it's not about policy change not about amendment it is about the real power to hearts and what is right and good for the people and safeguarding the country's economy you see the current the ongoing tussle between the massa and National Assembly and the Nigerian Navy as regard the amendment that were made to give some level of control and influence over the Nimasa Maritime uh, Agency in charge of monitoring what happens on top of our water, that is Nimasa. You know, before they always complain that the reason why they cannot act effectively to monitor what happens and the exchange that usually goes out. You know, you know what they do when they bring this vessel. They will get to a level in our waterways and they will divert all the oil from our oil way inside another vessel and that vessel will take and um, this has been under the supervision of the nigerian navy so uh, most times when Nimasa is invited to the house committee they always complain that they do not have that power they, do, they cannot sanction even when they discover illicit or some wrongdoings they cannot act that was why there was an amendment to the powers of the Nimasa and that power is now to give them edge to be able to prosecute and to be able to sanction any wrongdoings on our waters I know the Nigerian Navy have been enjoying this for a very long time you know, there are so many people many sectors that are not working in this country you know I don't want to talk about Okwama communities but let me tell you 
in the Niger, so, in the Niger Delta. I, I want to tell you today, you see the Nigerian military, the Nigerian Navy, there are some bad eggs that are always supervising all this wrong doing around our home. Now, who do you think the culprit is? I just mentioned, I just told you, it is the leadership. I'm telling you, you cannot mention name because these are organizations. Even the Oga at the top can will not be the one there. It is the boys. So you cannot blame the boys. You have to blame the number one person. So if we're going to talk about any wrong doing within the Nigerian, if you blame the number, the 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 F, uh, F, uh, Masha, the Masha in charge of it of the Nava. You understand? Look at what is happening on our waterways. How can Nigerian Navy be tell us that they are protecting our waterways and serious exchange of crude is ongoing and then we cannot arrest and we cannot do anything. And Nimasa is now saying that they want to monitor to ensure that whatever happens on our waterways when they see any wrongdoing, they can sanction and the Nigerian Navy is coming back again to tell us that no, it's going to cause some conflict. There is nothing like conflict. It's just for them to understand their roles and jurisdiction and act on it. And if Nigerians that are in position of influence and authority today are ready to make this country work, Nigeria will work. So those people who are the enemies of this country calling for all this kind of... Uh, to activity to destabilize government should desist and channel their anger appropriately to the right quarters now now talking about um security on mm. our waters mm. and you know the protection of our crude and how they are being exported mm. we have private security uh, agencies that are you know saddled with the responsibility of also protecting some of these vessels and so not just the nigerian navy or so, well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give you one, I'll give you one example. Company. Is it not NNPC? Exactly. Is it not Nimasa? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you are only answerable to your boss. And that is why we need to develop an higher mechanisms that ensure that there is technology, the use of technology to see that where human defects, where we have human defects, Technology can serve as a pointer so that we can address it. And let me tell you, let me tell you, we need to encourage whistle blower, blower more, like we see during Jonathan regime. Right now, I've not been hearing about whistle blowing again and all that. That also have passed away. But the policy is still in vogue. But what we need to do is to protect their safety, their integrity, and to take them seriously. To protect do you know their that, identity as well. Do you know that there are a lot of whistles in the last? 12 years that have been blown and yet Nigerian quarters, Nigerian government are not doing anything about it. So it's discouraging. Nigerians, you don't need spirit to help you facilitate some of this stealing. It is the Nigerian people that you use. And these people are willing to speak up. It is to ensure that when somebody speaks to you as government, you act on it. Sweeping it under the carpet is one thing that is giving growth to corruption in Africa and in Nigeria. The Nigerian government are not acting on some of the whistles that have been blown. And EFCC is not doing enough because some of them, they are only interested in protecting the interests of the government is uh, the, 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 the ruling party who appointed them. If we can have a level playing ground for EFCC, ICPC, NIMASA and everybody to report wrong doings in their ministry in their agency this country will work and Talk that is where we are missing it talking about uh, reportage of some of these illegal activities and having a level playing ground for mm -hmm. the major stakeholding companies mm -hmm. uh, to be checked properly uh, checked across board if we are going to go by that there certainly has to be an independent uh, entity yes. that will check me this because you, you 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 have you have pointed fingers at the security agencies mm. the government security agencies you have also pointed fingers at the privately owned security uh, services that are employed by nnpcl and the rest what modality do you think? What, what, what common ground can yes. be found to the this? common ground is this like i told people um, i always say is that the nigerian people 
I don't know how we got here, but higher percentage of us, the majority of the Nigerian people are not stakeholders. See, let me tell you, I think we need to start introducing what they call ambassadors programs, ambassadors programs in our schools, in our streets, among civil society organizations, where we can say one million Nigerians are ambassador to NNPC. You're not paying them salary. Just give them the status of ambassadoria. You understand? So that you can increase their interest in what happens in that sector. The same thing with Nigerian Navy. The same thing with Nigerian police. The same thing with Nigerian custom. You know, because of the number now, it is very difficult to corrupt all of them. One million may be too much. I'm just giving you an instance. Now, that is to tell you that you are now bringing more stakeholders. We have more people. Now, these ambassadors will have opportunity to be on the same portal. Maybe you can create something like a community like Facebook. In that community, all the ambassador of custom will be there. They can interact. They can blow with you there. They can chat. They can tell you that this is what is happening today. This is the policy. This is the person who came to get job here. You know, more Nigerians need to be involved in governance. These things is too narrow. We have left this... To the, we have to left a certain, we have a certain uh, caliber of people. We have left the affairs and the future of this country in the hands of very few corrupt people. That is why we are where we are today. Now, then moving on to other issues in the news so we don't overstretch the debate, it is more on the angle of Nigerians reacting to the current economic realities. Now, whilst a hashtag end bad governance protest has been garnering conversations with a slated date for August 1st, it is on the need to quell such protests from ending up in violence. Mm. Now, one out of a dozen newspapers this morning mirrors its lead on that situation. The Daily News Hub happens to picture this beneath the masthead with the catchphrase, hashtag end bad governance protests, never again. The writer also has it, Hashtag end bad governance. Don't clamp down on protesters. CNPP wants FG. Says address suffering Nigerian concerns. 259 CSOs vow not to allow violent protesters free reign during planned protests. One, we will confront them on the streets, apprehend, hand them over to security forces. Says it is another hashtag end SARS protest in disguise wants youths to stay clear, resist being used by disgruntled politicians for selfish ends. Now, I did look at the piece that was published on The People's Reporters. Uh, I, I, we spoke about having to highlight some of the possible violence loopholes in what many would see as a constitutional provision for the role of protest in the society. Uh, first of all, before I look into that report, I would like to first of all speak on uh, the uh, protests. Is protest good or bad? Protest is good, but we as a people, we have had seven major protests, riots between 1922 and 2020. The first is about women riots, and the last is NSAS protests. And none of these protests leave a good tale. They all ended they violently. always ended in uh, unwanted loss of lives and destructions of properties. Now, back to 20, fast track to 2024, we have seen protests like end bad government protests. Um, 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 Beatles, Shijuke, gentlemen in the studio. What we are doing here today is protest. When you speak on X, formerly known as Twitter, about wrongdoings about government, is protest. When you write broadly about wrongdoing about government, is protest. When you speak at town hall meeting about bad policies is protest. I don't know why Nigerians cannot give a clear definition of what protest entails. Mobilizing people, vulnerable people for that matter. Now, it's going to be in two groups. The people you know, for example, 
I am the uh, masterminder of anti-government and you are the masterminder of pro-government. You know what we will do? The people you have control and influence, as long as the money bags are ready to sponsor you, they give you some billions of crypto, give you some billions of naira, you start mobilizing people. They will also give me some money because it is not some people, most people protesting do not know the reason why they want to protest. They are just vulnerable tools instrument in the hands of the rich people the bourgeoisies i can tell you 95 percent of people talking about bad government protests do not understand what is governance what is democracy what are the policies of buari what are the policies of jonathan what are the policies of chinobu they don't know nigerians don't know about government most of our youth that you see in any circle asking for change of governance or protesting do not understand they don't have the mental capacity to understand what is happening well well for, for this particular proposed uh, protest yes. honorable Let's unlike the the nsas protest that took place in yes. 2020 which was um surrounding mm. uh police brutality mm. this one is about the current economic economic hardship facing majority of Nigerians. It's about food, it's about hunger, it's about poverty, it's about the fact that people can't have access to basic amenities, they don't have access to good healthcare services, their children don't have access to education, 20 million out of school children, it's a whole lot. It's larger than the, it's in my opinion now, it's in, in a broader perspective than the NSAS protest which was narrowed at police brutality. Do you think this is a right step in the right direction, or are they heading uh, to a very grievous end? Uh, Shijuki, let me say this. I'm not trying to shy away from our responsibility as people and as governments, but 75% of the problem of anger that you're talking about insecurity that you're talking about, joblessness that you're talking about, starvation, hunger that you're talking about, is not completely our fault as a country. That can be inked on the neocolonialism that you earlier highlighted. That is aided by some few people in governments. You know, the world economy is run by capitalists conglomerates, people with chains of businesses across Africa. 99% of the countries that, that determines our lives in Africa are not owned by Africans. They are owned by our imperialists, our godfathers and our founding fathers, our, our colonial masters. What they do is just to appoint Shijoke, appoint Beatles, appoint Desmond as maybe board of direct, one of the director board of directors in the company. But the people who determine that the policy of the business, the policies of how the people will fare, the people who unleash hardship on you are not Nigerians. So who should the protest be directed to? First of all, we need to understand our problems. And then we need to face it one step at a time. One step at a time. Now, are you not envisaging that we are going to have economic hardship when our Naira was floated? When where subsidy was Which removed? Was are you not anticipating? I was fully ready. I was aware because I am educated. I know what floating of Naira means. Ungozi Okunjo Iweala, the former finance minister, the N former CBN governor, during Jonathan, Sanusi Muhammad, now Emir of Kano, the reinstated Emir of Kano, they complained about this. There was a symposium in year 2023 by Cardinal State Governor Erufai in Kadena, where they talk about the economy. And one of the speakers there was Sanusi Muhammad. And he advised Ashwaju was look out. He was speaking in front of Ashwaju, then the candidate of APC. 
that Nigeria needs to take tough decisions because the economy is going into the worst level. That Nigeria is almost dead economically. Sanusi said that it was not part of the government. He made strong, strong evidence on why Nigeria may not survive the next six months if we do not take tough decisions. Part of the tough decision is that we need to float the Nera. And then many economists have proposed and supported that position because of the irregularities that happens in CBN and these Aboki Forest exchanges. Do you know that our major problem is not floating the Nera because everybody to know Atiku Obi and every other aspirant to the office of the president have always been in support of floating error and removing subsidy. But the only thing I faulted is that there have not been commensurable amount of planning. You don't float your error to, to, to cushion the effects cushion of the, what is going to happen. That follow. means even the president are guilty. Now, let's look at some of the challenges, especially with this hashtag, end bad government. Yes, let's go there. One of those challenges, like you rightly said, mm. is the pro and anti. For no, of course, they're going to clash. Yes. Now, this is one of the challenges based on escalation and possible downtrends to violence. That is what you're going to see. Now, if Nigeria is, if Nigerians and the Nigerian people allow to be used by the enemies within and outside Nigeria, to go ahead with that protest, proposed protest, that for me, I see need, needless protests because there are so many ways to express our dissatisfaction. This president listen. There are so many ways we can express our dissatisfaction rather than taking to the street. You know what it means is that there will be lawlessness. There's going to be public disruption. There's going to be public disruptions of business activities. And there is going to be violence because Nigerian is under police, and then under the guise of protest, there will be looting, there will be stealing, there will be clashes, and that is what we are asking the federal government to forestall to ensure that whoever is angry right now about the ongoing, the Nigerian government needs to call them to order. Protest if Nigerians are allowed to protest because we are going to have people, you know, the government just came into power barely one year ago. There are people who voted for the government. Some people, even if it's not the majority of the Nigerian people, some people voted for him. And there are some people that are opposition. There is going to be massive clash in our street. There will be, what you see in Kenya is child's play compared to what you're going to see in Nigeria. Nigerians are already in a volatile situation. Now, talking about opposition, yeah. Honorable, we have 15 minutes. Let's bring in more papers so that we look at it from the opposition angle. Now, the opposition, particularly the Labour Party, had been fingered by... The special advisor to President Bola Metinibo on media and strategy, Chief Bayo Onanuga on X, where he personally called out the Labour Party presidential candidate in the concluded 2023 general elections, Peter Obi, as spearheading the hashtag end bad governance protest. Now, Mr. Peter Obi, in his reply, has been captured on the first newspaper as its lead story this morning. Let's pick up the first newspaper together. On the first newspaper this morning, the, the headline reads, Help Nigerians in need instead of spreading lies, says Peter Obi, as Onanuga insists Obi's supporters eye pop behind planned nationwide protests. Help Nigerians in need instead of spreading lies, says Peter Obi, as Onanuga insists Obi's supporters eye pop behind planned nationwide protests. Now, this is the opposition which you were talking about. Now, it's been tailored towards a narrative that there are certain persons online who are the ones who would benefit the most from this owing to the losses their parties incurred in the last general election. Whilst we're looking for a united Nigeria and mm. peace building, does this comments have any weight? And should they have weight, are they not tantamount to being called in by competent courts of law to address these allegations if that they are factual or find to be bounding? This is a, these are political issues and uh, there's an extent to the interpretation that the court can give to it. We just have to look for a political solution. And uh, first of all, Nigeria is our country. 
Nigeria is what we are all struggling for. Peter Obi is um, a Nigerian. He contested the last election under APGA, you know, the Labour Party, you know, to be the number one president because he loves, I believe, the reason why Peter Obi contested election is because he loved the country. Tinubu contested because he loved the country. Atiku contested election because he loved the country. When you see any Nigerians, you know, that pick up a ticket that he wants to run, because leadership is all about uh, filling vacuum, creating bridges, and building people, empowering people, yeah. based on the skill set and the knowledge you have or your perspective about life and the solution you're bringing on board. So I don't expect any one of these people to be eating up the polity at this material time. Peter Obi might be 100% innocent of this so-called anti-government protest. But, you know, there is an adage in my place that when a child dies during the night and somebody just woke up with blood in his mouth, you need no suicide to say that this person is the one who killed the child. Peter Obi just contested the election. There are people who are Hungry that he didn't win. Who are still he has massive of supporters. The outcome of the election. They are still in their sleep. They are still not awake to reality that election is gone. They still believe that this their mandate was stolen and they need to get it back. There are people like that. Peter Obi may not need to instruct them that go to the streets. Some people feel that that seat belongs to Peter Obi. It's their opinion. So now when Onanuga wants to pitch his statement, it should be more matured and it should be more uh, careful so that you don't eat up the polity. Because now, now, now because he's, he's now, Peter be innocent. He's I've seen his giant, I have seen his giant stride. Yes. He has been going from place to place, mobilizing, criticizing constructively. You understand? But the I don't know what happened beneath the camera, but the Peter will be, I know, cannot sponsor violence you understand, against the Nigerian government. But that is not to say that it, did, it, it needs also to call, to make a strong broadcast. What I expect from him right now is to make a strong national broadcast calling on all Labour Party and every Biafran to desist and not to support anything called protest against the people. Because right now, most of the people who participate more are not APC, are not current government, people who won the election. They are going to people who lost the election, some members of PDP, some members of APGA, some members of AAC, that is Shorek Party, and others. They are the people who mobilize themselves. But I want every one of them, in the true spirit of patriotism and love of a country, look at the situation because this people, they are privy to the information. When we say some people do not have information, not the likes of this Shorek, not the likes of Peter Obi, not the likes of all these people, they have the information. But some of them, pretend to be mischievous by keeping quiet. It is the time that we need them to show that true, they are leaders. They are true leaders and they are true patriotic citizens. By calling on all Nigerians to explain in, in depth what are the problems with our policies. Because it's not that the policies are not good. Implementation. Implementation is where we have and, A little and, less than 10 and, minutes. And, Let's see if we can bring in two and, more papers. And, and, and don't you think, ju just before that, Bito, don't you think that Onanuga's uh, comment about uh, the P Peter Obi's supporters yes. and IPOB being behind the planned protest. You shouldn't say that. It, it is, is it's a unguided. Bit, it's unguided. And yeah, it, can provoke, it can even provoke them. Also, there should be a distinction. Have you heard about deviance behavior before? There, there should be a distinction between supporters of the Labour Party and members of uh, the, uh, the IPOB. You know, there is this term in sociology, we call it deviant behavior. That is when somebody is wrongly accused of something he knows nothing about he wants to do that thing just like when you tell somebody he's a thief and he has not been stealing one day and he, and he has been continuously being punished for stealing one day we just feel like let me steal after all they know me as a thief so i expect a presidential spokesperson of that i statue to be more diplomatic with a statement with a statement no look at what i said i said that peter obi is a statement and somebody who ran because he loved the country and wouldn't want to burn the country down because those who are promoting that protest are people who will be happy to see Nigeria burn. 
You understand? So what I said is that he should, he can address that. He should call on his people. Educate your people to know the wrong doings of this government and tell them things that needs to be, do, to be, to be done differently instead of keeping moods. But not to accuse him that politics is a bitter politics and Ononuga needs to tender an apology to Peter Obi. And, I, I, and the Igbo people, because IPO means independent people of Biafra. Although not every one of them is supporting that movement, but it's still Biafra is that every Igbo man sees themselves as a Biafran, but some don't support some of this agitation of secession. Now, calling on people touches on their emotions and their feelings. So Ononuga need not go that route. Personally, I will stand against that protest. Who speak against that posters because that posters will bring about needless sharing of blood in our streets and destruction of lives and destruction of laws. Now, gentlemen, as we try to draw the local newspaper review to a close with little less than five more minutes to go, let's see if we can squeeze in two more papers. Whilst opinions are largely divided over the planned August 1st nationwide protest, the Labour and its unions had decided to call on the federal government to reverse some of the tariff hikes that have occasioned the high cost of leaving, particularly in the yes. electricity sector. Now, and whilst President Bola Metinibu has granted a new minimum wage with an incremental between the range of 110 to 134 percent, Nigerians are querying Labour this morning on our next paper on if Labour has abandoned the call to reverse the electricity hike. Let's pick up the Daily Independent as we look at that issue. The Daily Independent beneath the masthead has that lead story. Wound leaking labor. Dumped fight to reverse electricity tariff hike. Wound leaking labor. Dumps fight to reverse electricity tariff hike. Now this story is continued on page 29. Many are saying if we have a reversal in the hike of electricity tariff, some of the purchasing power parity issues with our Naira currently and our take home would be reduced and families would be able to cater amidst this hunger and calls for a protest. Does it feel as though Labour having obtained the wage which was priority in the eyes of many has left a call that is affecting many Nigerians? Why I would like to join my voice with this uh, proposition or position of those who are calling for reduction in ICA. I will still maintain it. If you really want to have a drastic reduction in cost of production, give attention to Dangote. Let Dangote roll out diesel because most companies who even produce these things are using diesel, uh, automated gas oil. That's what they use, AGO. So now, there are some small scale and medium enterprise who also support their business with. Um, electricity and the hike would mean so much to them especially which will increase the cost of production which will automatically at the end of the day affect the cost of things but what we are saying is that i thought last week labor union and tuc chairperson they sat with the president until date apart from telling us about the, the proposed and they agreed 70,000 naira minimum wage increment. They haven't told us the clauses that culminated into that agreement. What was the vice versa that was discussed by Labour and the President to bring that discussion to close at 70,000? Were well, this not part of the negotiation in the first instance? So, if Labour, because this is a very big insult, that wound leaking that's an idiot a stupid person a fool only a fool and somebody who does not have future will leak wound so they need to come out and clear their names that they already discussed that they are already working on that labor needs to speak now if labor is not speaking now it will shows that they will not be respected next time and their voice will not count so they need to speak what does the old agreement entails as the federal government promised that give us six months or two months to see how this sector fare before we reduce it or reverse the tariff or not. So if there were other things that Nigeria needs to know, you see, information is very important because one of the reasons why you see people agitated is misinformation. When people do not have enough information, wrong information, and mischievous group. So it is now over on 
these people called TUC and Labour chairman to call NLC chairman to come out publicly to tell us some things that the Nigerian people need to know. Government should be inclusive. When we say inclusive government, giving out information enough alone is part of the principle now, of inclusivity. Now, 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 as we round up, um, Honorable Desmond, hmm. what's your take on uh, the banding of you, you know different parts of of uh, the country with band A, band B, band C and the rest. A lot of people have argued that it is completely unnecessary and unfair that some people get more electricity than others, even though they pay more, but they should be a level playing ground as it has always been. And also the reduction in electricity. Look at the argument. They said that the band A are people who have access to 24 20 hours or 21 hours on interrupted electricity and if you look at how these areas are categorized it's targeting the suburb the major city centers urban cities. the urban the rich man area the wealthy people people who can afford this now calling for regularization when government is yet to reverse is going to mean a lot of hardship to the remaining bands that is considered people who are still struggling to even pay the current charge right thereby having less, so now less we should first charge. of all call for the reverser before you talk about the regularization and don't forget that once it has been reversed you've solved the problem so let's not start this argument now of regularizing that everybody should pay uniform amount i tell you some that is when you will see the real frustration you know this frustration now is among the elites is the elite that is talking about it when you regularize and you allow people that do not even have 80 uh, 80 naira to pay i want uh, you're asking them to pay whether 225 for increment you see that there will be bypassing of light there will be stealing light and then because they are already waiting for death to come when you come with your police there will be a clash there will be an attack so we need to tread with caution chijoke we need to also try to push more to see how we can expand the 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 revenue of uh, uh, electricity in nigeria a lot of people are still using electricity and they are not paying even some of these big conglomerate organization mm -hmm. even government is uh, guilty I mean, of that uh, so we are talking about revenue we are talking about revenue government needs to do the needful and the people who are not metered yet that are estimated billing they should ensure that they have metered and number three we should ensure that we plug loopholes in this sector and that will mean more money for them to bring about the infrastructure that is needed to give us uninterrupted power Right. Well, gentlemen, thank you for a very elaborate conversation as we wrap up our review of local newspapers this morning. We would also turn our attention to publications on the foreign tabloids. We must thank Honorable Desmond Olariwaju Forobi for his objective comments on the program this morning.